each one of your characters and how they're involved and how they kind of tie into each other? So uh, th this, so basically, you're going to go along the journey of three different characters who don't know each other, who are all dreaming different parts of the same dream. But even though you're going to see it through the eyes of these three characters, the bigger picture is that the whole world is dreaming one dream, but we're all dreaming different parts of the same dream. So individually, you'll get to go along the different stories and see how these guys start to kind of understand the language of their dreams and finding clues in their dreams to help them in their waking world. And tell me a little bit about your character specifically. My character, uh, his name is Burton. I play a character called Burton. And he is the head of um, uh, security in a financial institution. He's like a fixer. He fixes people's problems. He's an ex-SAS guy. And he is deeply in love with this woman who brings out the best in him. She loves him. He loves her deeply. Then one day he wakes up and she disappears. And he can't find her. And he can't fix it. And then he starts to experience her, the dregs of her and the memories of her, only in his dreams. So then these dreams become a lot more personal to him. And then he gets challenged, his truth gets challenged, and he doesn't know if she exists in his dream world or in the waking world. So eventually will all of your dreams connect all three of your characters? Eventually we will start to overlap. And though we don't know each other, we'll understand to a degree each person's significance in possibly finding our truth, our journey, our clarity. Wow, that sounds amazing. And now tell me a little bit about your character. So Tess is a, she's a ten spotter. She, uh, she has a very heightened feeling about where the masses move towards, you know. And she is, she has been having dreams for the last seven years of a, of a boy, of a child. So she's convinced she's a mother. But in reality, she has no proof of that yet. So it sounds like some of these dreams might even be a reality that might play out. Might be a trauma, maybe something that you remember from before, kind of like real world, you know, it's, it's also, yeah, yeah. And now tell me a little bit about your character in this. I play the character of Taka, and he's a NYPD detective, and just kind of broken and beaten down by life, and he finds a, his escape in dreaming because he's trying to wake his mother up from this catatonic state in real life. And uh, so he, he goes and hides in his dream, in, dreams in a way, but then he starts finding clues and it leads him to solving, hopefully trying to solve this case of this cult obsessed group of, you know, who are obsessed with dreams. And it's that you'll start finding links to all three characters because of, partially because of this group. Now, to me, it sounds like this show kind of, you know, even though it's a supernatural show, it sounds like a drama and about people's hardships and kind of how they deal with them. Now, the dream factor for you guys, what did you do? have to do anything specific since it's a new show? Was there a CGI? Like, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, um, uh, in terms of f from a really grassroots level, I think for these three characters, who should come across as very real, relatable characters, the dream world for them represents a door of possibilities, you know? And um, what would happen is they'll become aware that they have the power and the ability and capability to walk into other people's dreams. So that's it on the very simple basis. And then when you develop from that, there will be moments of CGI and the magical element of oh, things. Okay. Of course there will, but this all comes from the foundation of something that should be and feel very real and closer than however we may perceive a dream to be. Now, let me ask you this. What do you feel this show brings that no other USA show sh is like shows right now? It, it's a unique show. It's, it's um, I mean, it stands alone by itself. There may be some comparisons that people may draw from, of course, but we don't shy away from them. We embrace the different um, source material that this may be compared to. But this sows a totally different seed which should inspire the lives of everyone. And for you guys, what was a favorite moment just shooting the show for you guys, especially maybe with the dream sequences or just the character development? Um, you know, I say, like, for me, one of my favorite shows was on NBC was Friday Night Lights. And as an Asian American, I just wanted to say something as simple as, you know, what do you want? Uh, just eggs and toast. Like, just to have real human dialogue 
and that was for me that was a big mark and so all a lot of what i do in this show is just human drama and you know it's not heightened drama where i, I gotta go shoot somebody or kick somebody in the face <laughs> and i love that and for you the fate my favorite just one of your favorite moments, either developing the character or doing the dream sequence. You know, like we're saying, even though it's supernatural, it seems like a very down-to-earth show where people can even relate to it themselves, which, you know, I think everybody wants nowadays. Yeah, it's... it's Everything's been really exciting to, to because you're really entering a universe. It's even even though it is anchored in reality, there's still that... It's a reality that is open to to dreaming and, and allowing magic in. And that's been really exciting because it's not only the eggs and the bacon, and it's it's just that emotion of these three characters that is traveling, like carrying you from the reality to their own sphere of imagination. And that's, I've never had that on a character, you know? it's I think we should always ask ourselves the question, like as actors, what what would my character dream? Right. You know? I felt like you wanted to say something. Well, no, I think it's it's kind of like the way when I first saw Mr. Robot, the the hook for me was we were as you know, being in the digital world now, it's like we're worried about being hacked or getting our credit card credit card frauded and all this stuff. And it's kind of like dreams. We all are part of that, you know? It's like that's the hook of like, well, what happens in other people's dreams and what if I could walk into her dream? Like that's some pretty cool weird thing. I heard you itching to say something over here. Did you want to chime in on that? Oh, I've just been inspired listening to the guys. I, I thought it was super cool what you were just mentioning about maybe as actors we should ask ourselves in the future, what would my character dream? Because it, it it can be very revealing. You can find a lot of a lot of answers there. I, n I never thought of that. Maybe as human beings we should ask ourselves, what does that person that I don't know dream, you know? Maybe that would be... That, yeah. That's definitely an interesting that, what, thought, what right? What's your most recent dream? You know what, I dream a lot about the water. Does that sound yeah. weird? Yeah. No. Yeah. And I, and no, and I looked that up and I, dr yeah. I dreamed about, uh, literally, this sounds weird, but a dead white horse. And I looked it up and in my dream I thought it was a unicorn. And there's a difference between dreams. So it, it actually, it's an interpretation of what you're feeling, what's going on in your life. And I looked it up and it reflected exactly. So yeah, Do, has this made you guys more aware of your dreams? I mean, do you, do you guys actually dream and remember them? Yes, and I used to be someone that didn't remember my dreams at all. And just by... Putting more awareness on your dreams, you you remember them more, and they give back to you a lot more. But there are lots of little things you can do to remember your dreams. You know that. Right. What about you? Do you remember your dreams? Um, I half and half. You know, it's it's more like just doing this show. You're forced as an actor to think about dreams more, and then it, like you said, like Lizzie said, is the more you think about it, the more you start. It starts weirdly activating, and you start dreaming more. Hi, I'm David Ajala. I play Burton on Falling Water. Hi, I'm Lizzie Brocheret. I play Tess on Falling Water. And I'm William Lee, who plays Taka on Falling Water for USA. Perfect. And you're watching Fabulous TV. Fabulous TV, baby. Yeah.